Hi, I'm Robert Coleman. I'm a Senior Applications Manager at Texas Instruments. Welcome to Power Tips. Welcome to Power Tip 53. In this Power Tip, we're going to use P-SPICE to model the power supply control loop. We're going to find that with some very simple elements, we can design a closed loop power supply. This is the power supply that we're going to analyze. What we have here is an integrated FET uh, buck regulator. Basically, we take input power, which is 12 volts, and we apply it to a totem pole output in the control IC, which uh, modulates the phase node coming out of, out of the control IC. So either the phase node is connected to the input voltage or connected to ground. And that feeds an LC filter for the output of our power supply. The LC filter integrates the switching waveforms on, on the phase node and in this case provides a 3.3 volt output from the power supply. This particular control IC is kind of interesting in that it has an internal control loop in it that monitors the inductor current and it actually controls the inductor current. So to control the output voltage of the power supply, you control the duty factor of, of the power switches, which controls the current in the output inductor, and basically you turn the output inductor into a current source, uh, feeding uh, output filter capacitor, and although it's not shown on this particular schematic, there, there's a load resistor off to the right. So the 3.3 volts out of the power supply uh, is monitored through this network of uh, resistors here, so it provides a sample back into the control IC. And this particular point on the control IC is in input to an air amplifier. And the other input to the air amplifier is connected to a 0 0.8 volt reference. And this particular air amplifier is a G sub M type air amplifier, or it basically it's a voltage controlled current source. And the current from the controlled current source flows through these three um, compensation elements here. So you'll, you'll see that we have an integrator at low frequency. At, at a higher frequency, you'll find that we have a zero in the control loop from this capacitor and this resistor. And then the even higher frequencies, there's another pole set by R3 and C7. So basically, the output of the, the compensation pin controls the current in the output inductor, which flows through the output resistance and sets the output voltage and that's how you close the loop on this particular power supply. And so what we're going to do in this next picture is we're going to show a simplified model that we built with P-SPICE. In this simple model um, many of the elements in the previous schematic were pretty easy to pick up and then there's some new things too. For instance this point here is our output voltage and this capacitor and, and resistors form the, the compensation circuit that we were looking at on the previous one. Um, in this particular schematic, we've added a AC source also. And we use this AC source to measure the control loop frequency response. Um, we introduce a small perturbation into our closed loop system here. And so we can measure this voltage and use it as a reference. And then we measure the voltage coming back on the output of the power supply to get a complete loop response to the power supply. So the next step that we're going to take is over here where we have the air amplifier and compensation circuitry. Here in our schematic we've shown a 0 0.8 volt reference which wasn't real obvious in, in the previous slide. Uh, you'd have to go to the block diagram level of the IC to actually find this. We have a voltage control current source in place of our air amplifier. And then from the data sheet we know what the G sub M of, of this voltage control current source is and we've included in our model. We've included compensation components from the previous schematic and then we also have shown an internal resistance that's within the IC itself. Um, this sets the DC gain of, of the voltage control current amplifier and so there is a fixed DC gain rather than just a pure integrator. Now another interesting thing that we've done here is there's a phase lag in the decision process on when to turn the, the MOSFETs off. And it can be a whole switching cycle or it can be zero switching cycle. So we've modeled it as a delay of about one half the switching cycle. And so that's what we've done with this voltage source here with the gain of one that buffer says from the 
the compensation circuit. We have a delay line here, T1, and then we also have terminated the delay line in its characteristic impedance of 50 ohms. And finally, over here on the upper right-hand corner, we have the power stage itself. Again, from the data sheet, we know what the G sub M of our control system is. That This takes the voltage from the output of the air amplifier and converts it to a current in the output uh, filter inductor. And so we replace the filter inductor with a, a current source, and then this feeds our output filter capacitor in our load. And you'll see that the capacitance in our output filter capacitor is not in agreement with the previous slide. And that's because many of the capacitors that we use in power supplies are ceramics, and the ceramic dielectric constant varies as a function of bias on the capacitor. In this particular case, the 47 microfarad output filter capacitor um, capacitance has been reduced down to about 30 microfarads. This curve shows the impact of the delay line in the overall loop response. If you look, we have red curve, which is the loop gain, and that's with and without the transmission line. So basically the transmission line does nothing to the loop gain of the power supply. However, if you look at the phase, if we didn't have the transmission line in there, you would see that we never got more than 90 degrees of phase shift. However, with the transmission line in there, we have significantly more than that. And this could cause us to have problems with our control loop stability if we didn't comprehend this. This might be an additional 90 degrees of phase shift in, in our control loop, and which would lead to unstable operation. So here's a comparison of simulated values to actual measurements on the power supply. Again, um, the loop gain is in very good agreement between the simulations and the measurements. And then if you look at the phase also, you'll see that there's pretty good correlation between the phase where we use the transmission in the line in the simulation and the phase where we actually did the measurements. Uh, again, you would see that we would have had very poor predictions if we didn't include that transmission line. Now, th this is not always necessary to, in to include the transmission line because you, you notice it takes a pretty high frequency for the significant difference between the phase and the with and without the delay line. For instance, this uh, power supply is operating at 600 kilohertz and you don't see a particularly large divergence between the two curves up until you get to about a tenth of switching frequency. So this is a very simple simulation of a power supply. This is something that you could put on piece spice and run in a few minutes. You can start varying your compensation components and quickly dial in on a final design here. So thank you for your attention on this one. For more power tips, visit Power Management Design Line and search Power Tips or click on the link to all articles in the description section of this video. Thanks.